checking in. When I did my recent video on uh, what's in my backpack, I showed one of my uh, new backpacks that I had gotten at the time, uh, the Osprey Exos 58 series, and uh, I got a lot of questions about uh, wanting more detail about that pack itself, and actually just more detail about ultralight packs in general. So today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some backpacks, just to kind of give you an idea of what to look for, and to kind of show you probably what's uh, you know more considered the latest generation of really ultralight backpacks. So to start out today, obviously what I have next to me is not an ultralight backpack. In fact, it's probably one of the largest backpacks on the market. This is one of my original backpacks that I have. It's a Kelty Dakota, and uh, I use it primarily for things like hunting. Uh, so it's just to kind of give you it's more of a perspective. This is a uh, this is a 5,500 cubic inch pack, or what would be, and in other terms, uh, in a lot of packs go by liters. This would be like a 90 liter pack. So when I really first got into backpacking, uh, I was looking for something uh, much more obviously lightweight than the giant uh, Dakota series. And uh, this is a pack that I don't make anymore, but this was the Kelty uh, Shadow 4500. So it's a 4,500 cubic inch pack, or about uh, 74 liters. So this is the backpack you saw in my What's in My Backpack video, the Osprey Exo series. And this is the Osprey Exos 58 uh, to be specific. And they make them in different sizes like the 58, the 46, and so on, uh, referring to the liter size. So the 58, you know, 58 call it a 60 liter pack, which is about a 3,500 cubic inch pack. So just for uh, comparison, I'll leave the others up here just so you can kind of get an idea. Again, we talked about like a 5,500 cubic inch or a 90 liter. 4,500 cubic inch or you know, mid-70s liters, 74, 75 liter, and a uh, 60 liter or 3,500 cubic inch pack. And uh, so just kind of, just from a size wise, you can kind of get an idea of what those look like. So I really started uh, researching more ultralight packs and I was really looking to shed weight, but not a lot of features. I, I liked all the features that you have in a typical traditional backpack of all the pockets, lids, um, you know, other places to hang things, webbing to slide things down into like external uh, for places for your tent or whatever those might be. So I wanted all that. I didn't want to go with more of just the kind of rucksack, frameless design. That's why we probably picked this one. Again, uh, whereas this one is a 4,500 cubic inch, about three pounds, eight ounces. This one uh, is uh, two pounds, eight ounces. This is a, a fully a pound lighter. Granted, it's about a thousand cubic inches less, but uh, as you saw in my back, what's in my backpack video, I can easily put all of my stuff into this pack for you know well up to a four or five day trip. Uh, I like it because again, it's got a rigid design, and we'll look at that right now. Again, more of a really traditional backpack where you've got you know a lid design, where you've got pouches on the front with zipper pockets on both sides. There is webbing pouches on either side for things like water bottles and then there's a front kind of webbing area if you're sliding other things like you know another tent or sleeping pad or something else. H2O I means it's bladder compatible, it's got a bladder pouch on the inside which you can feed out. But probably the other thing that they really tout about this thing is what they call the kind of the floating suspension design. And again it is a rigid design, an ultralight frame, aluminum frame there. But it's got this kind of springy web backing, and it's probably got a good couple of inches back here. And it's very taut across here, and this is so this will rest in your back. So obviously you have an enormous amount of ventilation. Uh, also, like I said, you know, it's got a lid, a zipper on top. It's got quite a bit of room up inside this lid up here. Probably got the size of a basketball <laughs> once you kind of push it all open. So it's a really big lid up there, uh, cast inside the lid. It's got another little zipper thing on the inside here, so again, even more space. So if you want to really kind of keep in, a lot of things in the lid, it's got a little pocket right here uh, for things like cell phones or GPS. I actually keep my GPS clip on here because I like to take it off and on. And then probably the last thing I'll show you again, again, uh, like they talked about all, there's probably about maybe six or seven pockets they refer to on this thing. So it's got a lot of external pockets. The two that is, uh, the last two that I'll show you is, they put a large webbing pocket with a giant zipper on both of the uh, sides of the hip belt right here. So you've got these two giant pocket areas that you can put more stuff into if you want to get to things very quickly. So again, uh, a lot of storage and flexible areas on this thing to put stuff. So the last couple of packs I'll talk to you about are probably what are considered 
true ultralight packs. These are the Granite Gear series. Granite Gear, uh, probably one of the best known names for things like through hikers on the AT or those types of places. And this is the Granite Gear Vapor Trail. So Granite Gear, a lot of different products. This is the one that everybody knew and loved and it was discontinued a few years ago. About two pounds, five ounces. Surprisingly, these are about the same in terms of capacity. And I think where they get most of that is you know, this is a lidless design. Basically, the top part comes off, there's another part that comes across this, and it's unrolled. So there's where your space is. I'll pull this open really quick. When we talked about large necks. Well, that's where all the other space is. So if you're really trying to pack things in, you know, you can fill this thing up quite a ways, you know, before you have to roll it off up here. So you can probably get another six to eight inches of height and really jam stuff in there. So that's where a lot of your uh, extra storage space comes in on these things. Now one of the obvious things you'll notice about a pack like this versus that is that uh, it doesn't have near the amount of external pockets on it. It's got some, it's got a couple of pockets on the side here, some mesh pockets, one on each side, and that are designed for things like water bottles, uh, and, and etc. So many people ask, you know, what is the attractiveness of things like the Granite Gear Vapor Trail or something like this? I mean, obviously it's the same amount of capacity, uh, a few ounces difference, uh, you know, so weight, capacity, it's pretty much a wash. Uh, this has so many more uh, storage devices, lids, everything else. Uh, why would you choose something like this? And I'll tell you probably one word, and that's comfort. These are one of the things that Granite Gear has done very well is in the comfort, uh, the comfort nature of their packs. Uh, this is, while it's, this is not a rigid frame like this, you can see it's got a flexible frame. It's a very thick foam pad back, back here with nice, comfortable shoulder straps and very thick hip straps. So one thing that they've really done on this thing, and why, which I think is why people who really do a lot of through hiking and you know, very, very, we're well, not talking about days, we're talking about weeks or even months. If you had to carry something like that on an extremely long amount of time, uh, you know, I could certainly see the, the, the attractiveness of a product like this. Even though Granite Gear discontinued this thing uh, a few years ago, uh, you can still look, you can, you can still find vapor trails out there, new ones, some stores still have a few in stock. Probably for about 150 bucks. I think they're about $200, give or take, brand new. So about 150 bucks. So these are all pretty much in that same price range, 150 to 200 dollars. I will say there has been some concern about the uh, material uh, durability on these products, uh, just as compared to some of the more traditional ones. Whereas you've got like 200 plus D denier, 200 D uh, nylon uh, type materials up here, which are extremely durable. Um, that's pretty much the same thing on the Kelty over there. Uh, these pretty much use something like uh, a, like a 100, 110, like a 100D, uh, you know, kind of a ripstop style body. Now the reinforcements obviously are heavier. They're like more like 200, uh, 200D, but uh, you know, it's a, they got pretty heavy duty reinforcements. So uh, I wouldn't be so much worried about the bag you know, bursting or something as I would be about the durability of it getting you know cut and ripped. So this is something to keep in mind. Uh, this one's held up pretty well. It is hydration compatible. It's got hydration ports on it, just like uh, the others do. Now, if you're just totally sold on the Granite Gear product and you really want something and you're, you can't find the Vapor Trail anymore, well, have no fear. Uh, Granite Gear's come to the rescue. They just released the uh, Crown VC60. Uh, so this is basically almost an identical pack with some few modifications that I'll show you, uh, but it is the brand new version that replaces the vapor trail. Uh, obviously you can see is this one has just come in. I haven't even had time to take the tags off of it yet, but I thought I'd run through it really quickly and show you some of the primary differences on this one. Probably one of the first things you notice is this one actually has a lid on it. That is an optional lid. Uh, when they designed this, they had a lot of folks who were requesting lids. They've actually included some new stays and some different places on here, both the front and back, to hold this new lid. And this is uh, an interesting lid, and I chose this particular lid uh, for a couple of things. One, I like lids. I like the ability to have a large area like this to store all kind of things into. But the secondary part that I liked about this lid was that when it's removed, and it's very easy to remove, they just, once all things are attached, give you four little snaps on there, so the whole thing comes off. And, uh, and it converts into a fanny pack. 
There's actually another a couple of pockets in here in the back with some straps that pull out into a belt. So this whole thing can turn can convert it from a lid into a fanny pack. And I like that for a couple of reasons. One was obviously I like the lids, but for those of, those of you who watched my uh, kind of my uh, survival kit video, uh, I wanted a small thing that would be easy to take with me away from the primary pack if I'm like going uh, you know, on a day hike away from base camp or just needed something really quick. So within this, within this, which actually has quite a few pouches in it again, uh, top, big top one here, the one on the bottom, etc. I could put all of my kind of my uh, survival equipment in this, and uh, if I want to on a day hike or some other things like water or whatnot, I can put it inside this lid and take it with me. And probably the next big difference you'll notice is the uh, is that just like this one, where it has the side pockets, they've extended that material, and this has a very large. You know, let's get this tightened up here. It's got a very large pouch in the front, just like the Kelty does. So if you want to have another area in the front to store a lot of things, so a lot of folks ask for that. So we've got a large area right here in the front to actually you know, slide again, a tent or you know, sleeping pads or whatever that might be in the front of there. So good move by uh, Granite Gear to put that in there. Probably the next big thing that everybody's going to notice uh, between the original Vapor Trail and the new uh, uh, VC Crown 60 is the suspension area in the back. Well, this again, it's a non-rigid, flexible back. Uh, but where this one was kind of a foam, kind of about a three-quarter inch foam, this is again, it's a foam that's more of a die-cut foam, and they built it with all these little ridges and channels in it. Because one thing I will tell you is that depending on where you're at, uh, you will sweat an enormous amount on, on the back of this thing. This will just become saturated. So it doesn't, didn't breathe very well. So that was kind of a complaint about that. So this is designed to change that. Does it work? Not sure, I'm gonna to have to find out. But it has all these channels that are designed to at least move some air, and it will, from just the looks of it, it will keep uh, you know, quite a bit more air between your back and the back of the pack itself. Um, as far as the shoulder straps, they pretty much look the same about in terms of the size and the, and the, the amount of foam and everything in those, so again, uh, they've added a couple things. They've added some more of these little pockets, which they didn't have before. So again, you know, taking a cue from some of the other packs, you know, I need a place to put phones, cameras, GPSs, whatever that might be. Uh, they've added those in there. They've added some. They've added some little rings here for you to clip things on. Uh, so that's nice. And then the last part that we'll look at is the uh, the, the hip belts themselves. Uh, I think to save some weight, and I forgot to mention the weight where this one was about uh, two pounds five ounces. These are actually two pounds, two ounces. So they actually shaved a couple ounces off. That doesn't include the lid, obviously that's without the lids. And the lid probably, you know, balances it out. So they're probably about even now in terms of you know, this one with the lid. So they managed to save some area in there. Um, I think some of that may be in here, again, it's kind of a, kind of a die cut stitched foam. Um, and these are probably, I would say, it's hard to tell, but I'd say about half the thickness of the original uh, Vapor Trail. So, um, you know, the jury's out on that one, you know, how comfortable will that be? Again, though, you know, a very ultra light pack like this, you probably don't need this giant thick foam padded hip belt. But I'll tell you, that was one of the nice things about this pack, added to the comfort level. You have all this foam in just a very comfortable pack. So, again, not quite, you know, not nearly as squishy, I guess is the technical term for that. Uh, you know, so you've got a very nice cushy you know, on the hips, on the back. Um, you know, they, so that's all. That, a lot of that's changed. So I guess uh, you know, we'll try this one out, and hopefully we'll have a further review on. Uh, you know, is this the new Crown VC60 just as comfortable as the original Granite Gear uh, Vapor Trail version? So now you pretty much have the lineup in the uh, kind of the latest editions of the Ultralight Packs. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, drop me a line. I answer all questions sent to me. Happy backpacking.